You are the chosen one. Welcome back to Choose in One Productions. Playing again through Demon's Crest. Though, just one moment, I want to make one little change. There we go, we're back. Sound has been a little bit high, I think, even on the last video with my attempts to fix it. So hopefully, this will be quiet enough. So here's the world map screen. You can move around, you can dive, which is actually useful to find secrets, since it's not always just things that are marked on the map. That was World 1. This is World 2. World 3, and World 4. Roman numerals, because they're stylish. As you can see, we can move around. This is World 2, we'll go to in a second. First, I'm going to show off, I believe this is the right one, the headbutting game. It should be that. Nope. This guy, you can buy spells from. These are all the basic spells. There's actually a second shop, there's only two shops. None of these spells are very useful. I will show them in a later video. But I don't have enough money to be able to show them all right now. I'd like to do it all at once, just because it is kind of annoying. And now check out this shop. Pretty sure this is the actual... Oh, this is the potion shop. All of these are healing potions. Elixir brings you back to life once. Ginseng, which is not here, fully heals you. Um, and they basically just do other amounts of healing. I only really grab the strongest heals and only against the hardest bosses. Because... I don't know, it just doesn't really feel worth the effort. So, oh, that's right, I forgot. The shops are in red. The Trio of the Pejo shop is in blue. Trio of the Pejo is this fat guy here. It's been a long time since a customer has visited my shop. Welcome to the shop of Trio the Pego. Or Pego, or whatever. We specialize in gaming for demons. This is level one, and is easy. The entrance fee is 5 GP. You seem to be very good at headbutts. I invite you to test your skill in my humble shop. Will you? Only costs five, and you win a lot of money. Familiar with the rules? No. It's child's play. Store as many skulls as you can as they come out of the holes in the wall. You have time until the torches fade out. If you destroy 12 skulls in the time limit, I'll give you five for each remaining torch. Is that clear enough? Then get ready. One, two, three, four, five. Those ones are actually hard. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. As you see, we had four left, and therefore we got four fives. They're all sort of different lengths. These ones you can hit just by standing. These ones you really have to hit on the downspin. Same for these. These you can kind of hit on your way up. You get used to it. That guy is mostly just for practice. There are two more, which I'll show in later videos. But for now, let's head over to World 2. It's got a cool music. And this is the city stage. When you have some talismans we'll be getting later on, this stage actually becomes very useful because you can come back here with a couple different talismans that give you different specific things you get, and so you can crash that guy's skull. It's a pretty cool game, really, with all the stuff you can shatter, all the stuff you can break and manipulate. And this door here, as you see, you get it to them from headbutting. This guy, besides just having some pots, says that according to this book, the humans had treasures called a talismans. They are rumored to be hidden somewhere in this world. The book says that he who is equipped with the talisman will gain magical powers. He doesn't tell you anything else, but if you have a talisman, he'll tell you what it'll do. We'll visit him every time we get one. But now to show you the ground gargoyle. Near the ground gargoyle, you can charge into things. And charging is pretty damn cool. You can smash through lots of urns and collect money. But its main thing is that when you shoot while standing on the ground, you shoot a fire that rolls and does a lot more damage than your normal fire when you're a ground guard, when you're rather when you're a fire guard. And the downside is you cannot cling, you can cling to things, but you cannot fly. These will be breaking later. That's a heal up there. But for now, we can't. That up there is a potion shop. This is a spell shop right here. And this guy tells you about your different forms. The general is wearing a uniform, something like yours. So I'm going to break one of those fountains, keep them to pieces once, which we already did, so we don't really need him telling us that. But if we're fire, hey, I haven't seen you around here before. Are you a stranger here? The segment will say yes. 
They say that the Red Demon and his firebrand is risen. He nearly burnt the Demon Realm to ashes years ago. If Phalanx had not rescued us, we would all be dead thanks to that arrogant fool firebrand. Take care of yourself! I'll take care of you. Pretty much, he's vilified you. Which could be true for all I know. I know there are other Gargoyles Quest games, but I haven't actually played them. If I understand it, you seem to be a good guy at this. Now, at the beginning of this, you will want to stay as normal fire, because otherwise, well, this won't be as easy to navigate. Later on when we get water, there are some things down there, but as of right now, the water does way too much damage. As you see, those are torpedo fish, and some ghosts, and some flame sensors. You step on the flame sensors, eventually the flames will grow on the top, you'll do it anyway, but the main th threat from them is the flame they shoot at the sides of them, which, you know, does a little bit of damage, but as you can see, most of this level, and in fact a lot of the game design can be avoided just because of the ability to fly. Now we could go that way, but for this video, we're going to go over here, and we're going to switch to the ground gargoyle. If you shoot the ground flame, you can destroy those hands, which is immensely useful, as if you stay trapped too long, a zombie head will come out and start gnawing on you, which obviously hurts. Those guys usually take a lot more hits. I'm not going to be concerned with every little piece of money, because as I've said earlier, money doesn't really matter too much in this game. There's a free health should be very useful against the boss we're going to be fighting shortly. It's the only thing that's really in any of these, so even though I generally like shattering everything, for the sake of time, I'll avoid my... well, I won't. There. There's nothing else really worth getting in this stage, so we can safely ignore it. And move on. Yeah. There's the spell zombie head I was talking about. By the way, those armor knight, the little guys that chuck skulls can throw them upwards and downwards to destroy their spell piles they rush at you. The armor knights, with another piece of crest, you can actually blow off their armor. But here is Bell. You only see him once ever. He'll do that little crooking thing. The real thing about him is that you really do want... This is when one of the annoyances of this game comes into play. You really will need to be using the menu screen a bit to be able to change between your different crests to take advantage of when he's in the air and when he's on the ground, because he's too strong to kill quickly, at least at this stage in the game. And you really don't want this fight to drag on with him torpedo killing you. That slash will always be low, so you can always change at that spot into the ground gargoyle. But whenever he starts getting you towards the corner, as you can see, this isn't exactly very safe. Good thing is, you turn into bone, you retry, you do have to restart at the very beginning of this section, so embarrassingly it does seem like... Ow. Well now... I can show you what happens. You should have to shoot these guys from behind, because their armor... I'm just not doing very good right now that I've gotten killed. That will do something to you. So, there's a full heal. And it's been wasted on me now. They rush at you. They're rushing at me anyway. I think this is going to be our full heal for the boss fight. Well, not. Go with me, zombie hands. Things tend to drop in waves. You generally don't tend to get mixtures of things. You either get one or the other. And this will be my last attempt at him for this video. So hopefully I do a lot better this time, because I'd like to end with Belt's victory. Or with my victory over Belt. Crooks his finger. Crooks his finger. Whenever he lands, is a good time to get right over him because he never immediately follows up a land with a jump. He needs to recover. And you generally don't want to let him have too much time to get too close to you, because every time he hits you does two damage minimum. And you don't want to get too far away, or else he starts to jump. And as you can see, he doesn't have too much health out, but he has enough. And you don't want to stay over him for too long. And that's Belth. Um, his scythe hand claps him to the ground, that falls. Oh, one little thing about the dash. You press dash, he'll move on his own. You wait long enough, you just jump, and he'll just dash and jump on his own. 
Sort of like Mega Man X. It's even the same button. So now we've killed Bell, we've gotten a piece of health, and, well, you'd think we were done with level 2, but there was something we skipped on purpose we can do even before we get the crest of water. And I think this is where we're going to end this video. We're going to get come back here and kick some major ass. So this is Corinne from Choosing One Studios. Next time we'll be seeing the boss Uvununu, which is a very interesting name, or Uvununu, I believe, actually. And thank you for watching, and... Have yourself a wonderful day. Hopefully I was a lot easier to hear.